For some people, all they want at the end of their life, what is success to them? Maybe I'll own a house. That's success for them. Maybe if I have this much money, that means I have success. Maybe if I got married to this one or that one, maybe that's, that means I have success. But I go back to what I started with. There are some people who are happy with doing just the minimum. Just the minimum. But I am here to tell you the young people in the audience today. Allah has blessed you and I am telling you He expects great things from you. He does not expect the minimum from you. There are so many Muslims, the only thing left of Islam is their name. That's the only thing left. They don't care about Salat, they don't care about Halal and Haram. They're far from this deen. What can I do to further this deen? What can I do to... I shouldn't just be happy that so many people come and attend Jumu'ah. Does that mean everybody's heart is clean? Does that mean that we, are enough, we don't need any more reminder? Is that what that means? Or are there evils in our society? Are there youth that are turning towards drugs? Are there young people that are just living their life for no purpose? All they do is play video games and watch movies and go to sleep. And the, if you ask them for a purpose, they say, I want to graduate and get a job. Is that a goal? Get a job? Allah gave us such higher goals. Your job itself is a means to a higher end. But you know what? We are living in strange times. The people who need the da'wah the most today are the Muslims themselves. But even if you get a good job, but you don't do your job. You got the job, but you show up late every day. You got the job, but you don't finish any projects. You're sitting there at the desk wasting your time. You're gonna lose that job. Somebody else will come and do it for you. You will not keep that job even if you qualified. Qualifications are not enough. You have to do the work. Allah Azza wa Jal is keep giving all of us, He's already qualified us. We are people of La ilaha illallah. We are already qualified. But that doesn't mean we're doing the work. If we don't do the work, if we don't make, we don't concern ourselves, if we don't care, then you know what's going to happen. In tatawallaw yastabdil qawman ghayrakum, thumma la yakunu amthalakum. You turn away and Allah will replace you with a nation other than yourselves. And they will not be like you. They will not be lazy like you. And those are when, Mus when young Muslim people have real iman. When young Muslims have real like, strength in their belief, then they, can, they have the power to change the world. They have the power to make the world a, a better place. But when young Muslim people don't have real iman, they don't have real conviction, then they are a waste of space. They are a waste of society, a waste of a generation. The only thing in their life, the, only, the biggest, the, the most important thing in their life is when is the next movie coming out? The most important thing is when is the next iPhone coming out? The next most important thing is, man, I wish I had that car. That's it. Your life doesn't go any further than that. My teacher used to say that Islam is similar to climbing a mountain. You know, when you're climbing a mountain, you throw a hook and you climb. If you throw a hook not very high, then you will only reach that much. You can't reach any further. If your goal is money, if your goal is a six pack, if your goal is a car, if your goal is a promotion, if your goal is entertainment, if your goal is girls, whatever your goal is, then you're only going to get that, you won't get anything else. But if your goal is something higher, to serve something more than yourself, you don't live a selfish life. You want to live for the sake of Allah and for the benefit of others. That's how you want to live. Then you will benefit yourself definitely, but you will be honored in the eyes of Allah because you set your goal much higher. Our deen in this beautiful ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal describes it, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ This is my path. A sabil is a path. And you know what? Allah did not say in this ayah, قُلْ هَذَا دِينِ This is my deen. Tell them this is my religion. This is my Islam. This is my truth. This is my book. He didn't describe it with any other language except this is my path. And all of you know a path is like a journey. So Islam itself, Islam itself is being described as a journey in this ayah. What does that mean? 
that means you have in any journey you have to make progress, right? So even if you take one step, you are more closer to your destination than the day before or the step before. Every single moment you are making progress in a journey. And in this ayah, Allah's Messenger says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this religion of mine and this religion of yours and ours, Islam, is a journey. Which means I am supposed to do something more for this deen than I did yesterday. And I'm supposed to do more tomorrow and more tomorrow and more tomorrow. I'm supposed to go further. Kalla. No, no, no. Then he comes back to the, 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 the Quraysh. بَلْ تُحِبُّونَ الْعَاجِلَةِ You people love to rush. All of you people. The Prophet is rushing to memorize Quran, but you people love to rush to get to the things you want. These petty, you know, petty temptations of yours. وَتَذَرُونَ الْآخِرَةِ And you cast away the Akhirah. You leave it behind. This is afterthought for you. وَجُوهُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ نَاضِرَةً Some faces on that day are going to be lit up. This is wujuhun nakira, even though it's a muqtada of a sentence, which is not the norm, which is to, to magnify these faces. Look at these faces, there are some faces, some special faces on that day, they're going to be lit up. They're going to be, you know, hasana, mushriqa. They're going to be lit up. Ila rabbiha nadira, Allahumma ja'alna minhum. They're, look, they're going to be looking towards their, their master, staring towards him. Nadira, nadira, yani an, an, an yara shay'an, aw an yumsira shay'an li mudda. Nadara, to stare at something, to not take your eyes off of something. This is nadara, you know. They're going to be staring at Allah Azza wa Jalla. basira, and there are faces on that day that are going to be just covered in sadness, extreme sadness. Shadidatul kuluha wal ubus. These faces are going to be so extreme in their, you know, their their gloominess and their sadness. They're going to be convinced that any moment now, a great catastrophe is about to fall upon them. A great catastrophe is going to fall upon them. You know somebody like in the dark, and they hear a loud sound, and they don't know where it's coming from, and it's going to attack them, and they don't know where, they're just like in that terror. That's the look they have. Okay, so that's judgment day. Well, let's talk about how you get there. They say there's a, some some attributed to the Prophet ﷺ, others attributed to Sahaba, but it's a very common phrase in Arabic. They say, "Man mata faqad qamat qiyamatuhu." Whoever dies, his qiyamah has begun. Surah so Al-Qiyamah ends with, "When does your qiyamah begin? When does my qiyamah begin?" It began with Yawm Al-Qiyamah, but our qiyamah, where well, the qiyamah comes from, the word qiyam. Qama yaqoom. What does qama yaqoom mean? Ah, our qiyamah begins when we can't stand anymore. Our qiyamah begins when we lie down, subhanAllah. Our standing begins when we no longer stand. The irony of it. Allah says, Kalla, no, no, no. Ida balagat taraqi when it, meaning the nafs, the ruh, it reaches the hayat, life, it reaches the end tip, the top of the chest. It gets over here. You can feel it leaving. The train is leaving the station. Waqila, and then it is shouted, Man raq. Any doctor out there, any physician, anybody, and qila, lam yaqul qala, qal qila, it is said. It's not just said by that guy. His cousin, his mother, his daughter, his son, his, you know, his wife, everybody's screaming, doctor, doctor, doctor. Wadanna, and he came to realize, it settled in on him, annahu al-firaq, it's time to part. He's looking around at his family, everybody else is crying and screaming, get the doctor, get the doctor, and he realizes this is the last time he's seeing them, it's time to go. He realizes also, he's looking at his body and he's saying, it's time to part my body, this is no longer mine. My soul's gonna be taken out of here. The time to depart has come. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you wanna see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you wanna see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.